announcement. Hey, stewards, we got some big news for our Patreon. We are now going to be doing exclusive Q&As that are only coming from our Patreon subscribers. So if you've had a burning question for us to answer live on the pod, get onto our Patreon. You can drop your question right in the messaging board and select questions will be answered directly on air from the podcast. So make sure you get onto our Patreon, subscribe, right. drop those questions in there, and we will answer them on the pod. Yes. We love you, stewards. Let's get into it. Cheese. Folks, welcome or welcome back to another episode of Good Service. We are your host, Ben. And Kevin. And today we have a very special guest in the pod. She is a brand consultant and food influencer. She's been featured on Tatler Magazine as one of the top five most influential food bloggers during the pandemic. We have fellow UCI Whoa. anteater. <laughs> oh. We have Charlene Yang, <laughs> a.k.a. Taipei Eater, is in the pod. Yo, oh, that yeah. entrance, man. That is, I didn't know Whoa. That's is that crazy. not accurate? Because I found that on yeah. your website. <laughs> oh, hey. Nice, you, for, nice, you forgot nice, that nice. it was up there. Yeah, I was yeah. like, wait, how did you figure that out? I didn't know. <laughs> the internet, the internet. Welcome to the pod, Charlene. Thank you Thank for joining you. us. Thank you for having yes. me. Um, so you are a food influencer. So uh, yes. Kevin had to really go all out for the, the beautiful layout. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that, what we're about to uh, enjoy. What do we have? Today's today, photocentric meal is yes. from Tokyo Central. We have three different mm -hmm. types of poke. I believe the contents of the poke will be one's like dominantly like salmon based. Yeah, that looks like salmon. Okay. Yeah, yeah. This one's more like your, I think it's like, like a your, that looks yeah, like it's a, like a soy base with uh, tuna, tuna in salmon. salmon. And then we have here, this is more ahi focused with, uh, they call it the Hawaii poke, but they added some like caviar you. and stuff mm. on the side. Oh yeah, yes, yeah, show you, yeah. yeah. I never had like the yellow fish eggs. Oh, yes. I thought that was shrimp. Yeah. No, bro? I don't think so. Oh, no? I think these, this is all fish row. Okay. Because okay. I remember oh, what yeah. you said. Okay, well, I'm not allergic to the, oh, the oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I was just like, there's no shrimp yeah. anywhere okay, near this, good. so we're no, okay. The only thing I can't eat is the expensive stuff, like <laughs> lobster or shrimp. <laughs> you can't eat the expensive stuff. Yeah. Ah, okay. so she is allergic to price. Got it. Yeah. Got it. Yes, yes, yeah. Yes. No, no bougie food. Amazing. Amazing. Okay, cool. All right. So we're about to get into the food, but before we get into the food, we start off with a first bite reflection question. As I was um, doing some homework on you and as I was praying for you, you know, it's, it's funny because I always think that like the question should be based off of what the person does for a living which is mm. not always the case <laughs> and so i was just like kind of sitting there and i don't know why but the word like soul care came up like Whoa. like like oh. soul care and i feel like well kind of along the lines we're about to get into some food but i think mm. in terms of how we take care of our soul i mean we need to nourish our soul we need to do things that yeah that feed our soul right mm. yeah. so i feel like the question for us today for our first bite is what is feeding your soul these days? Ooh. What is feeding your soul these That's days? That's a good question. <gasps> yes. Let's get our bites ready. Let's yeah. get our first. I, I think I'm going to go with the show you Hawaiian. Look I'm going to try some burn. of this. Okay, black I guess we'll just get start. We're all gonna start that way. Yeah, yeah I'm, I'm gonna, gonna get I'm gonna do chopsticks. Black maybe. caviar into yeah, yeah, that's the way I'm yeah. gonna do this. So in Korean, we call this albap, which means uh -huh. egg rice. Albap. Oh. They mix a little bit of albap with Hawaiian style poke. That's what this looks like. Nice. Yeah. Yes. But anyway, look at this. This looks amazing. <laughs> all right. It's also good Korean. Right? Yeah. Let's hey, go. Your Korean was yeah, bomb right there. We're gonna we're gonna show our cameras. Your camera's right there. Right there, there it is. Oh, your okay. camera's over there. Your camera's over there. We're just yeah, gonna do a little sure bit of this. Boom. Yeah, you're good right there. Yeah, yeah, you're yes, good. Yes, yes. Here we go. So cheers, <laughs> okay. cheers, cheers, cheers. Oh yeah, that's solid. Mm. That's fresh. Tokyo Central. Yep. Doing man, it right. They don't miss, man. Yeah. So this yeah. is a cold food section of Tokyo Central. Mm. They usually don't miss. This is delicious. Some of this crab. My goodness. Mm -hmm. See, I saw the guy it's cutting good. this, so I was like, this yeah. gotta be fresh. You know what I mean? <laughs> And mm -hmm. if you guys are curious about what we're eating and if you're just hearing a bunch of lip smacking on the audio, <laughs> tune into YouTube. You get to see all of our amazing food. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Shout out Tokyo wow. Central. So whoever has the answer to that question. So usually yeah. we just take this bite and kind of reflect can take on it. it a little bit. Okay. But if you feel like you have it, just share. Off. Yeah. So again, what mm. is feeding your soul these days? Okay. I don't know. Like, like one thing I think is like people. I realize... Mm. 
they can either feed your soul or drain your soul. Oh, 100%. Uh, and one funny thing was, I think back in like 2021 to 2022, that's when I was in Chicago. Mm. And I was not super happy during that time just because like I went from 24-7 doing content yeah. to no one really cares about content at all whatsoever because mm. it's like Chicago and the people are just like very studious, <laughs> you know, at Northwestern. So I took some break from like doing content. And after that, I haven't been back since then, you know, and mm. this time around, like a week ago, I just flew back to Chicago to celebrate one of my good friend's husband's birthday. Yeah. And then this time around was like so refreshing because I thought I didn't really have a lot of friends in Chicago. I didn't want to go, you know, like go back just because I feel like there's not much to do. But this time yeah. around, it was like very soul fulfilling because during that time, I actually brought that friend to church. There's a church called Soul City. Oh. Whoa. Okay. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Okay. I just thought about it. Wow. And then, okay. And then I brought them all. I brought like eight people and it's wow. all their first time to church. Wow. Yeah. And oh, then that's so good. this time back and they're like, hey, we're still going to that church. Like, oh, that's so good. Yeah. yeah. And then so even though like some of them have like different religious beliefs, like they're sure. still going back because wow. they feel like something there is so special and that mm. really feed into them. Wow. Yeah. So I think like that trip for me was very fulfilling. Mm. So recently, like a friend, like a really good friend of mine, like her dad passed from cancer. Mm. Mm. But before that happened, I mean, it's like a process, right? But I kind of just like got in like really close with this friend and also her family. So even during those like hard times, they have more than enough to like really also take care of me. And also wow. my soul. And then so what I did is because the dad really loved playing Mahjong. Mm -hmm. So I'll go over and just like play Mahjong with him. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. And I yeah. And I think like that's like my way of like spending time mm. with him. And then like one thing that really got me was just like, I think it was like one day I got to work early and then I went over and there's like a bunch of like veggies. And I was like, hey, like, let me cook for you guys because I love cooking. So I made like this chicken soup it was supposed to be like chicken noodle soup but i had like too many ingredients <laughs> <laughs> and then like what happened was that end up turning into like the dad's like last few meals wow. like home cook meals wow. yeah mm. and then i was on my way to chicago and i was like crying on the way there i was just like oh my gosh mm. but i think like some part of me just feel like oh i should have or could have cooked something even better for him mm. and then mom was like oh the fact that he heard that i made it like he couldn't really eat that much anymore because it, it was literally a few days before him passing. Mm. Yeah. But he like grabbed hole onto the bowl and then he just like downed it. Mm, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So like that was like really touching. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Mm. That's like yeah. what happened recently. Wow. That's wonderful. You know, when you're saying that like, you know, you're thinking about you could have cooked something better. It's so interesting that like, I mean, you said he ate the whole thing. And, mm -hmm. you know, I think some of the expectations that we put on what we think should have been done, yes. what is considered better. When at the end of the day, I mean, like us coming from Asian families, like most of our parents love language to us was feeding us food. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't That's know about right. you, but my parents didn't say I love you to me. They weren't very emotionally expressive, mm -hmm. but they made sure I ate. <laughs> you know, and that was always the yeah, first question yeah. I was asked did when, I, yeah. when I came home was, did you eat? Yeah, yeah. Sometimes she, you know, on special mm. occasions, like kind of cooks sort of fancier meals. But my normal meal was pretty basic. It was just mm. like rice and like side dishes and like a maybe a protein. But that was like the daily meal that my mom would provide. Mm. And if I were to think about, was that the best meal that I could have gotten? Maybe not like anything fancy, but it was like it was her showing her like daily love to to me mm. and uh this was like how she would you know regularly express that so like i think even for you to cook something i don't know whether that's sort of a basic meal that you cook or if that was something that you like kind of went out of your way to do but the mm -hmm. fact that he received like your love and intention of like hey i, yeah. I want to express care by cooking for you and so yeah i would say that was probably the perfect meal 
Mm. you know, for him to receive something that you would just like, you know, the overflow of your heart and wanting to serve in that type of way. Yeah, I don't know. I think that's really cool. It just kind of stands out to me like that. Mm. Yeah. I love what you said about how people can feed your soul. Yeah, even when I ask these questions, it's not like I have a premeditated answer. Like, oh, I already know what I'm <laughs> yeah. going to say. I'm like, I ask it and I'm like, I don't even know. I'll right. figure it out as yeah. I sit there. But mm -hmm. I will say, yeah, good people for sure. Oh, actually, yeah, okay. we definitely good people, 100% that. But I think my answer, I'm going to go slightly different. Well, I'm just go different, you know, and, and this is like uh, we had a recording like right before this. And so I kind of came in today with this a certain type of like not even energy, like a certain type of motivator for the day this morning, you know, after I woke up and I kind of like, you know, made my bed and, and I just kind of like sat on my, my little sofa. Mm -hmm. I kind of just like laid back. I mean, normally I, I start praying and I like I start talking to God I started like thanking him for the day and all this mm -hmm. stuff in it but this morning I felt this urge to just like lay back on my sofa mm -hmm. and not say anything like don't even feel like you need to start the conversation with God right now mm -hmm. and like you start talking to him where I just felt this like and I think this was the Lord saying like just lay back and just relax for a second and then as I just kind of like you know kind of laid back and I wasn't you know, I pray out loud, so I wasn't like verbally saying anything and I just kind of had my eyes closed. Mm -hmm. I think what I was getting from that moment of just like silence was like God inviting me to rest first before I start doing. And I think God's like, you should do this more regularly, aka you should probably do this every day, <laughs> you know, like rest before you start doing. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because, I mean, I just woke up from sleeping. So it's like yeah. I re I was resting or, you know, sleeping, mm -hmm. but it was like it's an active rest, like choose to rest before you start going into your day and start doing mm -hmm. stuff and start even telling me what you want to tell me and asking things that you won't ask of me. And so when I just kind of laid there and I was kind of just like. Yeah, like, yeah, like this just feels good to just rest before you and then invite you, Lord, to like lead my day. I think, I don't know, I tend to tell God what's going to happen that day. Like, God, uh, I got to go do this. So bless that. Give me wisdom in this. You know, keep me safe in that. Provide for me in this way. Like, I'm telling God what I need for the day. Yeah, I just felt like God was saying, receive of me first. And then like, yeah, I don't know. I, and then I just felt just felt good. <laughs> it felt you good. Felt full. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I don't know even that I felt, I just felt ready. I'm like, that's okay, good. now I'm ready to yeah. like go into the day. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Yeah. I guess that's kind of like a soul care move. Yeah. I think I was able to experience today. Yeah. yeah. I agree. I, yeah. I love um, when you were talking about your experience in Chicago, because the story that you're talking about, it wasn't your father. It was your friend's father. Mm. Right. Yeah. And I think what's really beautiful about what you were sharing is that when I was thinking over this this question, Ben always like drops these questions and I'm like, oh my God, <laughs> why do I have to go so deep? I don't know <laughs> where they come from. But I'm just like, okay. <laughs> but when I was thinking about it, I was like sitting here and I was like listening to your story, listening to his, and I'm just like thinking to myself, when do I feel the most like spiritually or like holistically full? Like my whole body, my soul, my mind, my heart. When do I feel like this feeling of like ultra contentment? Like, when is mm. that moment for me? And immediately, the strangest thing is it's not a moment for myself. It's always mm. a moment when, like, you're rooting for your friend or you're rooting for someone in your life, whether mm. it's your your spouse, your partner, your family, yeah. your kids, your your friends, whoever's in your community mm -hmm. that right. either you prayed with, prayed for, or you lived life with. And in that moment, you see this divine win that's happening in their life. And you're just overfilled in this interesting spiritual empathy of like mm. yes mm. you know it's such an impactful feeling if i really sit on it and i'm like that's not even for me like i'm just witnessing a miracle and i'm getting the after effects of that and it's so crazy that i'm so filled by somebody else's miracle because they're mm. in it they can't see it but because i'm outside of it i get to see the full glory yeah. mm. and it's such a beautiful experience and like the way you describe your friends that never went to church, come from different ba backgrounds of faith, but you go back and they're like, we're still at the church. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's such a simple statement, but the joy you felt right. was like, whoa, like that's mm -hmm. crazy. Go God, you know, that's amazing. You know, and I think as I was sitting here, I just kept thinking about all those things over the last few years that I got to witness other people win. And I just think God that like, because naturally, I'm a selfish guy. You know what I mean? Like naturally, like mm -hmm. in my flesh, my natural demeanor, I think about me all the time. 
I mean, we're all like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you yeah. know, mm -hmm. but like when I think about it, every time mm -hmm. I'm stuck in me, I'm miserable. Mm -hmm. I am miserable. But when I'm focusing on others, like there's so much joy in it mm. in a level that I can't even explain. And I think that's definitely what's been keeping me full lately. Mm. That's just mm. been uh, mm. really on my heart. Yeah. Speaking of full, I did have to ask. So like we kind of know how you got into. Oh, wait, did we talk about that while we were recording about how she got into content? No, no. we didn't. <laughs> get into that now. <laughs> well, okay. I, as we touch on that story, okay. before we even talk about the food part of the content you create, there's something that I always have to highlight when someone goes, hey, I'd love to be on your podcast. My first question is, why? <laughs> <laughs> why? <laughs> <laughs> like what about this podcast made you want to come i'm i'm curious and i'm like excited about the answer before you even say it. i don't even know what it is i don't know like okay so one is i've always i don't know like i feel like god just put this thought in my mind a year ago mm. to start a podcast myself oh, okay yeah mm -hmm. yeah mm -hmm. but i've been so busy uh, i haven't yeah. had time so yeah. i was like hey like you know if god you still want me to do this like provide some opportunities yeah right and then okay. so i got to be on like my friend's podcast sure. and yeah. then i saw what you're doing yeah, and i just yeah. thought it was really cool where because i feel like for content creators a lot of times it's hard for us to express our faith in mm. a public setting yeah. Uh, in yeah. a lot of ways that like, you don't want to intermix what like your beliefs with like what you do professionally. I see. Way. Yeah. But I also feel like it takes a level of like courage mm. and boldness mm. to step out and be like, hey, this is mm. what I believe and this is what I uh, what really impacted yeah. my life and what yeah. transformed me. Yeah. And that's why I thought this is yeah. so different because nowadays there's a lot of podcasts like they get yeah. really viral because of you know the topics that they talk about <laughs> yeah, yeah right yeah, yeah. but like yeah it takes faith and courage to like do what you do mm. yeah and that's why i want to be part of it yeah mm. that's yeah. awesome mm. first of all thank you yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we're honored yeah, that yeah, you yeah. Want we're honored, <laughs> yeah, yeah. We're honored that you mm. want to be here but yeah and i love the the answer because i love giving we love giving yeah. a platform for mm. any of our friends or anyone in our network right. or anyone that knows us to use this platform to go, hey, I do all this cool stuff, yeah. but I also love Jesus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 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 Cool. Well, speaking of the cool stuff, so mm -hmm. being a food influencer, you know, it's just crazy. Like you can now, because of social media, you can be an anything influencer, like a, mm -hmm. a tech True. influencer, you know, and a, a podcaster influencer. So like, yeah, what about food? Well, for one, like what is your... Mm -hmm connection with food outside of we all love to eat and we you know everyone you know has to eat but mm -hmm. like why did you choose food to kind of be the space that you wanted to create content mm. um in and um yeah how did you get into it so from early age like i think my family they're just all foodies Yay. um <laughs> yeah and my brothers back in the days they would use those like sony point and shoot camera mm -hmm. and then me being the younger sister, I want to be cool like them. And then so I got <laughs> one of my own. I like beg my parents. So Aww. I started taking pictures in like middle school, mm -hmm. right? And whenever we go out, we're like taking pictures. So start from there. And another area was I really enjoy cooking. Mm -hmm. And partially is because my parents don't really cook. Like my mom doesn't cook. Mm -hmm. So I start cooking in like third, second grade, third grade. Whoa. Okay. Yeah. Um, That's interesting. So, like, yeah. normally you would do something like that because your parents like love to cook. But so, like, no. who, how did you learn how to cook? Like, who taught so you? So, my I had like nannies growing mm. up, mm. right? And then so one nanny she really taught me how to cook, like from like frying eggs and to like making curry. So in fifth grade, I actually made curry for all my friends on my birthday. What? what? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I want to be her friend. <laughs> I nice. love like cooking for my friends and oh, then, like awesome. seeing their expression if they're enjoying it or mm -hmm. not. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I love that. So from there, uh, I just like been always like been taking pictures. I used to post them all on Facebook. Now no one really look at Facebook. <laughs> <laughs> let's let's find her channel later. Yeah. <laughs> and then I landed this job at a you know like media company, mm. and my boss was basically saying hey like i see that you have this talent why don't you do something with it 
And to me, I just saw like all the roadblocks and he asked me, why are my roadblocks? And I was like, okay, first I just graduated from college, you know, buying food, eating out all the time is expensive. <laughs> and then second, it takes a lot of work, right? Back in the days, we only had WordPress, like oh, I'm revealing my age, but... <laughs> <laughs> I was just like, oh my gosh, like we have to like write and like put pictures and then like it's a lot of work. And then to him, it's like, why don't you start from Instagram? And that was like back in 2016. And I was just like, okay. And he's like, to support you, I'll pay for your lunches as long as Whoa, you're working. Wow. Yeah. And he not this boss, man. Yeah, Dude, he's a bad cool boss. boss. Shout yeah. out, man. Shout out. Shout out. And then he not only paid for mine, but also my coworkers too. Wow. So it's not just like, oh, for me. But then he's like, hey, you can Yelp any places as long as they're not too expensive. We can yeah. go. And um, I shared this before. One time we went to like a spam musubi place. It was like deep fry. It was in like near Orange, mm -hmm, I think, mm -hmm. or like Santa Ana, that area. And then we went into the shop. My boss was like, hey, like, where's your owner? And I was like, oh, my gosh, like, what is he going to do? Mm. Right. And then he's like, oh, get him out. And then he came out and he's like, hey, you need to meet Charlene. She's like this really like talented creator. <laughs> yeah, She's going to yeah, help yeah. you promote your business. You got to treat her well. And I was just like, oh, my gosh, I'm so embarrassed because like I literally <laughs> just started that week. So I only had 300 followers and they're all my friends. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, like to me, I was like, OK, like one is like I am feeling like this imposter syndrome, but yeah, then yeah, I haven't yeah, even yeah. made it yet. So it's not even imposter. It's like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But I think it was like around then, I feel like if he believed in me more than I believe in myself, that says mm. a lot. And then I need to just like, you know, try out. And I just continued. And I talked to him later on and he said, he's even surprised that I'm still doing it because wow. he thought I was just going to give up after a year. Wow. But I did it and I turned it into like my own brand. Yeah. And then eventually, I mean, earlier this year, I was even on Netflix yeah. on a show. So yeah. 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 I saw that with uh, like, somebody feed Phil. Yeah. Yeah. That's wow. So like one show. thing led to another. Yeah. So wow. that's amazing. That's am yeah. Yeah. I feel like, man. So when you say that your boss was the one who kind of pushed you to do it. Yeah, he was just being like an Asian uncle too. Like he was like calling <laughs> out the, <laughs> the owner. <laughs> but I yeah. feel like, I mean, that's, that's like a mentor, you know, he was mentoring yeah. you mm. and, and mm. you know, shout out to him. Cause like yeah. you only really do that for people that you, you know, you see something in, mm -hmm. but you care, you care about, like he cared about, like, I, I mm -hmm. want you to excel in this area that I know I see you have mm -hmm. the potential. Then, you know, you talk about imposter syndrome, man, that's something that like most people struggle with that. I struggle mm -hmm. with that, you know, every day, but you know, it's dope when you have people, um, I mean, it doesn't have to be that they're older than you, but oftentimes, you know, like people who have kind of lived life a little bit more and kind of seeing different things they can identify things in people like man i, I see this quality in you mm -hmm. you just need a little bit of guidance and, and you just need the right opportunity right. and you also need to mm -hmm. take that leap of faith and kind of stretch yourself to be uncomfortable because i'm sure in that moment you're probably like i can't do this i'm not qualified to yeah. do this i don't have the tools to do it i don't have the experience in it mm -hmm. but you start somewhere and now now yeah. look at where you're at you know what i'm saying i think that's a huge inspiration to you know anybody out there that is curious about entering into a space of being some sort of a content creator influencer and like mm -hmm. you've you've done it and you're you're living it out right yeah. now that's yeah. super dope yeah. the other uh part of your identity is being like this global citizen you know you're like mm -hmm. uh, you weren't born here you were born in where were you born again one more taiwan time? taiwan mm -hmm. so as being born in taiwan and being here actually i'm so curious where did this fervent love for god start for you because not a lot of people will gain a platform and go okay the first thing i want to do is tell everyone that i love jesus you know what i mean like, <laughs> like that's not what people want to do if anything yeah. they'll be scared if anything but there's a boldness yeah. in you that you said mm. nope i want to use my platform and i want to make sure that i find space to let people know that i love god and mm -hmm. i think that's beautiful and i'm just curious being someone that's global where did that happen so it's a funny story. I went to this boarding school in Taiwan. Mm. It was like in middle school. And long story short, I bullied this girl. Oh. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Shout out to that girl. <laughs> no. And then the mom knew too. But then oh, instead man. of like telling me, he's like, hey, why are you bullying my my daughter, she would cook super delicious food and then just bring it to school and then have her daughter share it with me. <gasps> yeah. Wow. And then that, she, that's a move right there. Wow. And one time God. I think like it was like on our way back to the dorm. 
from school and we're just like walking side by side and the mom was like hey like we're all like you know like the tree like the tree of life analogy is like god's gonna like prune us so we can bear much fruit for me it's just like okay i'm not even a tree i'm a human okay, <laughs> like, where does that analogy. fruit come this from apply to me. Yeah. <laughs> and then later on just like oh yeah like it makes sense because like for us it's like it's a natural progression where as we're growing right like if we believe in God, like God is going to prune us like in areas where we're not growing and thriving. Right. So we can thrive. Wow. And so now she's my best friend. And Whoa. we went to the same hmm. elementary school, middle school and college wow. in like two different countries. Isn't that crazy? We both went wow. to UCI. Yeah. So wow. literally shout out to your friends. And then she's getting married December. Oh, yeah. Hey. Wow, so you went from yeah. bullying this girl to now you guys are like <laughs> good friends. Yeah, like wow. lifelong friends. That's yeah. really cool because like, you know, what her mom saw was an opportunity to love on somebody. I would imagine a parent's gut instinct would be to protect their child, like mm -hmm. to make sure their child is not being hurt anymore. Mm -hmm. She could have went into protection mode, but I would imagine that this was a Jesus move in her life. Like she probably was able to see through her child's being hurt to looking at you like, I think she's hurting. Like mm. this other girl is hurting. That's why mm. this is happening. Wow. So rather than going into protection mode over her own, mm -hmm. she went into outreach to like, I want to love on this other wow. child who is hurting. Mm -hmm. And wow, I mean, shout out to her mom for being able to really decipher and discern through the situation. I mean, as a honestly, as a parent, that's like super convicting, bro. Because like, I'll be honest with you, if somebody hurt my son, <laughs> yeah, you would be like, where is this boy at? Let me talk like, to his parents. Like, because like, like, man, you know, I I already taught my kids how to box, so I'm just like, <laughs> so that, that's that's the that's the thing. Because naturally, you're like, I want my sons to mm. defend themselves, right? right? But now, oh man, now like, I'm, I'm listening to the story. I'm like so convicted. Mm. Sorry, Jesus. Like I need to do better. But oh, you my know, gosh, like um, that. Yeah. Also, the power of food. Like the, yeah. she would cook. I, I was a foodie. Yeah, you know, from she early would age. Cook these delicious meals. Dude, this Give woman you changed your life. Yeah. Like this is so crazy. Yeah, from like your boss who kind of pushed wow. you to kind of go for the content creation to yeah. you know your friend's mom to you know, feed you delicious food to like break down that barrier. And speaking of food, like, I mean, you know, we eat every episode and, um, mm -hmm. you know, we have mm -hmm. food to sort of like, I don't know, there's something about sharing a meal that creates safety, it creates connection, it creates invitation to like draw in, you know, and like as we're literally mm -hmm. eating family style, we're like eating from the same plates and stuff. And so, yeah, like something that powerful that her mom, I would imagine, her mom didn't have this plan like watch i'm going to cook these delicious meals and i'm going to no, make they're yeah. going to become best friends she just was trying, <laughs> she was just loving on you she was yeah. just That's serving so you and man shout out to your friend because i could also I would also think that she would be hesitant be like you want me to share this food with this girl that is giving yeah. me my a enemy <laughs> You know? enemy. Enemy. <laughs> right. And then, you know, for her to yeah. trust her mom in that, like, okay, mm -hmm. like I'll share, I'll share this food with her. Yeah. And like, look at what God did through that. Like, you know, he I mean, brought later you guys on, together. I was bullied too. And then, so she basically forgave me. And then she's like, Hey, I'll bring you to church. So oh. that's how it kind of started because we live in boarding school. So if you get bullied, it's like a 24 seven thing. And there's no parents right. to like chaperone anything, like yeah. or teach you anything. Wow. But basically like Lord of the Flies, like yeah. trying to <laughs> That's <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Bro, when you say Lord of the Fries, it, or flies. It brought me back to like uh, when we had to read that book. <laughs> so I was like, mm -hmm. High school. Yeah, I identified with what was his name? Like Por P P Picky. <laughs> Piggy. Yeah, yeah when yeah, his yeah, glasses yeah, yeah. broke. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right. I, I, was, I was a round child, so that, that, that definitely hurt Aww. me. But. Dang. Well, yeah. I mean, what, like, that's such a cool testimony. What's up, Sewards? Thank you guys so much for supporting good service. If you guys love what we do, then become a Patreon subscriber. As a Patreon subscriber, you get exclusive content every single week. From Q&As to solo reflection rounds, extended episodes, spicy takes, vlogs, and so much more, you're going to find all of that exclusively on our Patreon. Log on to patreon.com slash goodservice. 
Thank you guys so much for your support. Back to the episode. You are now in this place where you can influence You know, and it's funny, I I say the word influence. I tend to like, I don't really like that word, being an influencer. And you know, shout out to to, to Vincent and Ellen, you know, they when they came up with this idea of Mm -hmm. like starting this um, collective, creative collective called Break Bread, they they wanted to kind of redefine that word from Mm -hmm. being influencer to be impactor. Like like being able to impact people in a way where, when I think the word impact, it's like to change lives. Mm. You know, to influence is like to like I almost feel like influence is like to coerce you to do something like I'm going to influence you, you know, but like to impact somebody is like I want to be able to change your life, you know, for the positive. And I think, you know, when we think about who can have a positive impact in the world, mm. we we tend to think that, oh, those are for the pastors. Those are for teachers. Those are for like doctors and, you know, lawyers who are there to like really, you know, like have a impact on society. Mm-hmm. But we don't think that a food content creator can be somebody who can change someone's life. Literally, someone mm. changed your life by inviting you into food. Right. And then. You were able to, you know, change someone's life by cooking a meal for essentially one of the last meals for someone's father. And that, whether you realize it or not, you impacted someone's life with that. And so I think the beautiful thing, you know, in this day and age especially is when we have the right at the core of like why we do what we do. And we're talking about like motivation earlier. What are the things that motivate you to do what you do? If the motivation is in the right place, it almost doesn't really matter what the thing is that you're doing. You're gonna impact people's lives because you're showing up. It's the human, the person that's showing up. And then the product is just the product, right? Mm -hmm. That's why like, yeah, anybody can be an impactful person. You know what I mean? You can Mm -hmm. impact people in any sphere because people are looking at who the person is, like who's saying it, who's doing it, you know, Mm -hmm. where's it coming from? So I think there's something there and I want to encourage you too. I don't know, like, you know, yeah, as you were saying, like to be a front facing, like sort of content creator that is in a space that almost seems maybe a little bit random to be like a Christian food influencer, you know, like people Mm -hmm. like even for myself, like people will like, they kind of tend to like, it's not that random, bro. Yeah, (laughs) exactly. It's not that random. And I love it. And I I think we, we live in a time now where it's becoming more and more like, yeah, like people, like there are Christians in every sphere. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I love that you're doing it in a place where it's around food because food is again, it's a place where people, Mm-hmm. feel home they feel love they experience camaraderie mm-hmm. build mm-hmm. relationships and you're a living testimony of that. so, I had, so cool. I, had a, I had a question about when you said i feel like god is calling me to do some sort of long form like podcasting like mm-hmm. this audio video long form where i could be more authentically me as younger creators out there because uh i just assume you're a very young creator by the way just i'm very you know, young yeah yeah very yeah. young very young so as a very <laughs> young creator coming up in the game I know there's other creators out there in different categories that do love God and they struggle with like, this is the content the world knows me for. So they're kind of like pigeonholed into this one thing that they have to keep doing over and over again, because that's how this consumable mindset of content is, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. But as they grow their platforms and trusting God in that process, you said you were called to do something that's different, which is I'm leaning towards this podcast. I'm leaning towards long form, more authentic content. Mm -hmm. As you're listening to that, what's that process of listening for you? How do you know that this is the direction he's pushing you in? And just kind of like, if you like to share what that process is, so it helps others kind of like listen Mm -hmm. to their heart as they're talking to God, you know? It's a very deep. (laughs) (laughs) Just tell me your process. I want to know it. I think for me is like naturally I'm just a very creative person. I have a lot mm. of ideas all the time and being a very strong P sometimes I have to like dial back and be like, Hey, how can I be more realistic in terms of if this is doable, accomplishable, mm. or like, am I just trying to do everything at once? Mm. And I think that is like a lesson that I'm learning right now in life where like how do you prioritize things and do things that are most important to you and why you're doing it Mm. instead of like 
hey, it just feels good. And that's why I want to do it. I think even like with my food content, right? A lot of times it's like, I feel like I could do it. I feel like I could do it well. And so therefore I'm going to do it. Mm. And not knowing where it's going to lead me and not knowing the direction I'm heading to. So a lot of times I'm just like, oh, like this opportunity presents. I'm just going to mm-hmm. show up. I mean, there's nothing wrong with that because I've just mm-hmm. been how I lived and how yeah. I've been doing. Yeah. And I think like sometimes it does take the person to, you know, show up, like you said, like whether it's like showing up for yourself, showing up for the people around you or just saying yes to the things that matter. And then when opportunity mm. arise. Mm. Yeah. So to me, it's like that. Yeah. Yeah. How do you feel that when I use the word ministry, I think Mm -hmm. you might get a certain image in your head like of what ministry looks like, but I just define ministry as like your everyday life is your ministry. Your vocation is a part of it, your output, whatever you post on social media, like your life is your ministry. So for you, do you have like a compartmentalized view of it or do you kind of view what you do as a part of how you show how jesus is showing up in your life like how do you define ministry in in your life so i actually have never thought of like combining my like food content with ministry Mm -hmm. i think this is like very new for me or like something that i've been like reluctant to do so i have not Mm. but i think like through uh, day-to-day life and then like in the community you know just by me being who i am I get to like connect with a lot of people on a deeper level. It doesn't have to be in front of camera, but sometimes it's just Mm. like creating a very meaningful friendship and relationship and actually befriended with some like singers too in Taiwan Mm -hmm. and they're like strong Christians too. So in front of camera, they're this like big name star, but then behind the camera when we're just having conversations, she or he is just my friend and we can talk about our faith together. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what separate like those relationships so one is like hey when god comes into the picture it becomes more authentic and then there is a realness instead of like something that just like superficial on you know on the surface like feel good type of conversation Mm -hmm. but something that we can actually talk about like in regards to like life how we live and even with relationships yeah that is ministry so i know you said you never really thought about blending those two worlds together Mm -hmm. I think you are blending those two worlds together without Mm -hmm. realizing because, you know, I think when you build relationships with people based off of what they do, I don't necessarily think that's a bad thing. Like, Mm -hmm. that's kind of the the icebreaker into like, oh, Mm -hmm. you do that? I do this. And Mm -hmm. like, let's talk. And now we're like kind of just like, now we have a reason to talk. And then when you... Yeah, when you say the cameras are off or, you know, once we Mm kind of get out of that space of like talking about the thing that we do, Mm -hmm. then the question of like, so like, how's life like? (laughs) You know what Mm -hmm. I mean? And it's kind of like, okay, now we can go a layer deeper. Yeah. And then when you talk about how life is like, yeah, sometimes life can be tough, you know, for somebody. And then you can sit with them in that place of them processing a difficult you know situation mm-hmm. or, or a place that they're in yeah and then how you respond to that situation will show them who you really are mm-hmm. and so i feel like it's an identity thing you know and we definitely live in a world where people will say that i am a doctor i am an entrepreneur i am a podcaster we say that i am as the thing that comes after it is my vocation is I am a this, as if that's what we think people care about. I think we bury ourselves in the, like what we do. And we think that that's what gives us significance and value where we're truly who we are is who God says we are. We're sons and daughters of God. And that is the true identity piece. So when we kind of peel back the, you know, what we do in that conversation, and then we get to like a real place, that's ministry. That's like literally it's marketplace ministry. It's like vocational ministry. And I think you are doing that. And Mm -hmm. I think that's what's cool. Cause even like a conversation like this, Mm -hmm. somebody that who follows you Mm -hmm. may never have known this part about you. Mm. And now they're like, wow, I didn't know she loves Mm -hmm. God. Yeah, we can lose followers and we can, people who don't subscribe to Jesus might be like, oh man, like I'm I'm not really down for that. Okay. But then you also Mm -hmm. will gain people. And I think that part of like the gaining and 
like losing. I know we put the responsibility or the onus on ourselves. Like, oh man, if I do this, then this is going to happen. Versus like, do I trust God enough to believe that like whatever is supposed to happen, God's going to allow it and or he's going to allow for it to happen or he's going to make it happen. AKA mm -hmm. when you have influence on somebody, like, is it mm -hmm. that you influence them or is it that God, like, because you were bold enough to like talk about who Jesus is in your life, and that can be attractive to somebody. And then God brings that person to you. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's a different spin on being bold because I think we fear being bold because we think that if I do this, this might happen versus mm -hmm. like, can I let me just be myself and leave what happens up to God. Mm -hmm. So it's like it's there's nothing to be afraid of because mm -hmm. God's got it under control. You know what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. I'm a big fan of this saying that, like, not everybody is for you and you're not for everybody. Mm -hmm. and, and so yeah. like the people who are who you will be for mm -hmm. you, you'll always be for them and yeah. vice versa yeah I, I just love that like i love just the boldness in general just mm -hmm. because i always want to encourage people to be bold i think for the longest i identify with a lot of things that you're talking about because mm -hmm. for the longest time yeah. i have a public persona of business mm -hmm. i even had a stint where i was a small time food creator myself nice um and because i had all that I think for the longest time, I kind of lost the taste of content creation. And then so mm -hmm. I stopped creating content and I was kind of in this like weird, like six months to a year pocket of just not really creating because mm -hmm. I was like, I don't want to create anything. It's all good. I don't want to talk about business or food. Mm -hmm. I think I'm all right. And in that time of like wrestling with that with the Lord, that's kind of where this podcast was born. And when the podcast was born, I wasn't thinking like, how do I blend food <laughs> even though there's food on the show yeah, this is actually so ben's idea <laughs> the, food, food, yeah, the food yeah. was his idea and um it wasn't even mine it wasn't like yo we have to add food like that's not where mm -hmm. the thought process was. It was i didn't even know there's gonna be food i was like oh really yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. awesome Same. that means uh <laughs> that means the content's that good yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. it's not just about the food <laughs> yeah it's not really the, the food is really just for the uh for the guests i guess and so I was so happy that it was like a prayer that I was struggling with that God answered all at once by just by this, this platform existing, mm. even though it was for others to come on and talk about faith, but it just became like also for me in my prayer of uh, wanting to hang out with my brother, but just talking about God just openly. Mm. And also, if you look at my social content, like it's a mixed bag of this podcast and everything else in my life. So it's like, oh, so it's like everyone will constantly be bombarded with like Christian content yeah. regardless, you know? So it's just this, um, to me, it became this little cheat code of just being authentically myself. But mm. I think all of that to be said um, earlier in the previous episode or a previous guest, we were talking about just being right with God, mm. right? Like it all stems from that. And I think that's how simple it needs to be broken down sometimes is like, there's so much complexity in our lives because we have work and then we have like entrepreneurship and then we have content creation and then we have friends in all sorts of that spectrum. And then there's like politics going on. There's all this yeah. noise everywhere. There's too much information. There's like 40,000 types of milk. Like it's just like <laughs> it's just so crazy, you know, yeah. the amount of like decision fatigue from the moment right. i opened my eyes and also information explosion yes yeah. Yeah. like there's so much and like what's the simplistic beauty of god is i just need to be good with him and then everything else just literally falls into place and i just want to encourage that to you and to the audience as they listen is that yeah we're talking through the nuances of our lives and how we got here but at the same time it's like just seek Jesus. <laughs> you know what I yeah. Mean? So yeah, I think that's um that's just something I wanted to say to us. But yeah. Yeah, I think there's like we stress ourselves out with no one's actually telling us like, hey, don't do this, because if you do this, this is gonna happen. We think mm -hmm. it in our own head. And I think that is absolutely the enemy. You know, the mm -hmm. enemy wants us to um compartmentalize. Because, um, yeah, literally I read this morning that the, the enemy, he steals, kills, and destroys. Mm -hmm. That's what he wants to do. He wants to destroy our dreams. He wants to steal the gifts that God has given you for you to use it for God's glory. He wants to steal that. He wants to kill that. He wants to destroy that. All of that happens. I mean, the Lord, I mean, uh, the enemy starts with implanting question and doubt 
in our minds. Obviously, it's from what we think about is a reflection of our hearts to ultimately what we end up doing, right? Yeah, I think with that, where God is a holistic God, God is not someone who says, you keep that part there, you keep that part there. God's like, I want all of you all at once, every single time. And I think when we, yeah, can identify the lie of the enemy and know that that thought's not from God, like this thought of like, Oh, I shouldn't do that because what's going to happen if if I do that, this might happen. So therefore I won't. You literally had a whole conversation to, by yourself. <laughs> you, you, you like, that's it. You literally had a whole conversation by yourself. And then you chose like, oh yeah, yeah that, that's probably not the smartest thing to do. So I'll just be safe and not yeah. do it. And I'm not, I'm not saying that this is what you do. I'll speak for myself. Cause I, you know, me being a dancer and that was kind of what my content was always known for. I'm like, what's mm -hmm. it going to look like if I just start putting out me talking about Jesus all the time, I'm probably going to like lose a bunch of followers. And yeah. truth is I did. I did lose a bunch of followers and also I gained a bunch of followers. So like, mm -hmm. and, and it's not about the losing and gaining of followers. And if anything, I'm proud of myself and happy because I am now 100% myself, mm -hmm. even front facing. I don't have to be like, oh, like you'll hear about my Jesus story when we sit down behind closed doors. But when I'm, you know, my public persona is going to look like what it's supposed to look like. It's going to have to be entertaining. It's like I have to maintain my brand. I don't know. I'm a personal fan of live your brand wherever you're at, mm -hmm. behind closed doors, in front of people, out in public, in the quietness of your own room, you know? And I Unless think you got a Nike deal. Just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, bro. <laughs> no, I'm just playing. I'm just playing. Or, or Adidas. No, or Adidas. Or Adidas. <laughs> we don't discriminate over here. Charlotte, uh, I, got, I got a quick question for a quick one. Only because like, since you're on the pod, I, yeah. I just want to unveil your process with people, I guess. Okay. You said you're a very creative person. Mm -hmm. I am curious. Do you bring God into that process today? What does that look like? Mm. And it doesn't have to be like overt. <laughs> okay, can I can I come back to this? But like, I just want to oh, yeah, say yeah, something yeah, yeah. Go ahead, go to ahead. what you were saying. Like, you know how you said like the enemies come to like steal, kill, and destroy. Mm -hmm. I have like one thing that like I do it myself is I tend to pray out loud because like when you pray mm -hmm. inside of your mind, the totally. enemy can like mess around with your mind. But then when you're praying out loud, like whatever has been spoken into the atmosphere, like the enemies can't change that. Like, mm -hmm. yeah. So that's, that's so why because a lot of my friends, like especially like if they're more shy or they're newer to the faith, they're like, I don't want to pray out loud because it's embarrassing. This weird. It feels awkward. And that's why I tell them, I was like, whatever has been said, it's like said and done. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But that's so good. Creative process. There is one. So uh, during, I think it was like 2018. So I was, no, 2017. Yeah. 2017. I started selling cinnamon rolls oh, on my platform yeah. for fun. So it was basically, there's a shop that sells cinnamon rolls. And I thought to myself, I was like, I can definitely make it better. So I went home. <laughs> I <Yeah. laughs> okay. I just all like right, baked, right. right? And then I made like a batch and I shared with my restaurant friend. And one guy was like, hey, this is one of the best cinnamon rolls I've ever had Ooh, in Taipei. Okay. Can I buy it from you? And I was like, sure. So it started from 20 to 40 and then like more. Like more orders came in, Whoa. and then I would go to like the coffee shop. I'll like take pictures of people like ordering my sim roll. I'm like, oh my god, like people are liking it. <laughs> and then after a while, I was like, hey, I actually don't make much. Like the margin is like so slim because mm. I am not a wholesaler or anything. Mm -hmm, so sure. I'm just like baking at home, and I just thought to myself, hey, I can um, start selling myself, right? And every time before I like bake and then before i send out my cinnamon rolls i will always like pray over them oh and then like before awesome. i give it out that's so, so good. that's something that i learned from my best friend's mom too she was like selling those like enzymes i don't know and then she would like pray over the fruit and you know how like back in the days there's like the studies where you like spoke word like different words to water and yeah, rice yeah, yeah. And yeah. They, like mold differently mm -hmm. or Mm. They, cri they crystallize differently and i just feel like there is like power mm. in the things that we say in our words totally um, That's so good. whether it's like to others or to ourselves or the things that we make we produce like we always yeah. like pray over it wow yeah. yeah and then those like that project was so fun like it reached to countries that i didn't think it was possible like wow. i had customers from hong kong 
Yeah. I had like people from China messaging me. Yeah. And I had like people That's from crazy. South Korea, Indonesia, yeah. Malaysia, wow. like all these countries. I was like, whoa, I'm just selling in Taiwan. But then all these people from different places. And this is like out of your house at the time? Yeah. Or- <laughs> Dang, Dang. Yeah. that's how it starts. Oh, that's so yeah. crazy, bro. Yeah, that's dope. Wow. Dude, was, that's super dope. It was so janky. I used Google Doc. <laughs> people were like yeah, signing yeah, up. Yeah, yeah I was like, right. oh, that's a lot of orders. Better close it. <laughs> <laughs> Dang, that's yeah. cool though. I mean, yeah, like you, even just something simple as like just praying over mm-hmm. the the food that you're sending out. That's so powerful. And mm-hmm. uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah, like God could use you know. I mean, not not to say that the praying is is a small thing. Like yeah. there's absolute power in prayer. Bible says that you know the power of the tongue is life and death, right? Like what we speak mm. um, is life and death in, in in our speech. That's right. No, I love that, and I think that's so cool. That probably something that you didn't know that it was gonna do anything to like pray. Oh, like this, like some like magic formula. Like if I do this, then this is gonna happen. <laughs> no. it's just like yeah. your heart yeah. was just moved to like yeah, just pray over the meal and bless it. Yeah. That's really cool. These days now with what you, you know, are doing not only in food, but you're doing like consulting and, and marketing and, and branding and things like that. Do you have like kind of something that's kind of on the horizon that you're working towards and like a kind of a, a dream that you're trying to achieve in that space? I want to one day open my own thing. <laughs> like restaurant or? Uh, could be anything like restaurant or like food business. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Maybe Kevin can help me. Yeah, yeah. I know. She's like, She's this looking is like actually, right into this my is actually a business pitch meeting. <laughs> I see why she wanted to be on this podcast. Yeah. This, is right here. this is a little this, season. This is a real reason. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Yeah. She was looking. She was side eyeing me the whole. Yeah. Time. <laughs> She's like, "Here's my resume, Kevin. Just take a look at it. Just take it. Nah, I love it. That's, That's why she talked about the cinnamons, man. She was talking That's about the dope. I- you asked a question. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, good, I, I, good. Yeah, it's yeah. important to ask these types of questions because like man, yeah, god, no, god cares yeah. about your dreams and yes yeah. um, yes he does dude just real quick pause on that you know how sometimes and this is so recent there is this thing that was happening to me professionally uh, in the recent few months i'm just gonna keep it super vague but the prayer was really simple i just wanted peace i just wanted to be closer to the lord and i kept it very general because i just knew that god was awesome and amazing so mm. i just kept it there I'm so focused on just praying the general prayer and just sitting with God that when the prayers were answered, it's crazy how he still cares about your desire. Yeah. Mm. Like I, he reminded me of that. He was like, because he didn't answer it like, here you go. But it was like so specific to how I needed it. Mm. And I was like, ah, oh, man. You know, so it was um, God just cares about your desire. So it's okay to yes, just yes. name it, you know? Mm-hmm. It's like, mm. it's so crazy. I know. Some Sometimes, yeah. like, I don't want to jinx it, but, you know. There is no such thing as jinxing. I know. There's no such thing. She's going to get a restaurant. <laughs> but, you know, She's going to have a CPG good. You know, I, I think yeah. it's good yeah. to talk and vocalize yeah. your dreams and put it out there. Amen. But, but Amen. putting the timeline and how it looks putting that in god's hands that's yeah. right you know yeah. and yeah yeah like you you know people have dreams that they've been sitting on for like decades even years yeah. upon years and yeah and i that's why i love even having a space like this because yeah. you know as believers like i i mean this is kind of like the first conversation i've ever had with you and then now that i like kind of know like what's on your heart what mm-hmm. you care about what your dreams are man as like i love that us as the people of God, we we are in every space. And so like mm-hmm. if it's a matter of helping connect the dots of like, oh shoot, mm-hmm. now like I know somebody in that space. And you know, like that's how things start moving. And I felt that like, you know, especially last year <clears throat> that the there was like a strong feeling and I keep calling it like a spirit of collaboration that mm-hmm. like God wants his people to come together and collaborate with each other mm-hmm, and do mm-hmm. things with each other. Mm-hmm. People do it all the time and, you know, in every other uh, sphere, you know, so like, That's right. why not yeah. in the people of God to like right. create with each other and, and yeah. help each other build each other's dreams so yeah that's right i'm very passionate about that so charlene in every uh episode we ask our guests you know this question so good service uh is uh we go to these amazing restaurants that provide good delicious nourishing meals shout out to tokyo central tokyo central Central. the cold food section yeah (laughs) and we had bomb sushi spread today um but we keep going back to restaurants because 
Um, not only do they have good food, but they create a good experience, which is also good service is a part of that, right? And we come back to these places because it's familiar. But what good and service could actually mean different things to different people. So Charlene, what does good service mean to you? Like good and service or good service? Whatever, however you want to break it down. Okay. Um, <laughs> I feel like all these questions are so deep. I need to like have some <laughs> time to think. Like if you were to offer good service, how would you define that? There needs to be like warmth. Mm. Yeah. And then That's so good. a human touch to it. Wow, um, wow. And then it's about connection. So... Wow like the entire experience right so for example mm. when you went to tokyo central you saw the chef like cutting the fish like if he wasn't you probably wouldn't have yeah. like bought it yeah, yeah but because you saw that act mm. so it's like how everything comes together right yeah. so good service i think like whatever we see is the end result but then mm. behind every single product there's so much that goes into it mm. for example like the person that picked out those containers the people that design mm. the containers right like the people that design those bentos right and putting mm. them together and then plus the chef that actually like you know cut the fish or the people that source the fish so that this is like what we see and then a lot of times i think consumers they only care about the end result mm. but then it's like all the preparation that goes into it and mm -hmm. then all the hard work yeah. and yeah, yeah. so so I think that's good, good service. That's wow, good. That's so yeah. good. I love that. I love, love that. that. Yeah. What is a way that we here or our listening audience can serve you? Serve me? Um, I don't know. Help me. <laughs> launch my <laughs> business, <laughs> Kevin. Help me. <laughs> Help me launch my business, Kevin. <laughs> Hey, that might have been the best answer. I don't know. Just help me. Just help just just help me. Anybody can help, help Charlie. Yeah. <laughs> Holler at him. All, yeah, yeah. Any help counts. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't flutter DMs. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. I don't know. That's good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think. I don't know. I don't have hey, an answer. That's all but, good. Yeah. yeah. That's all good. It's just all follow good. her journey, y'all. Yeah. 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 How Well, how can people follow your journey? Where are you most active? I am most active on Instagram. Mm. yeah so and that your handle is taipei eater so taipei t-a-i-p-e-i-e-a-t-e-r yeah. nice, yeah. nice 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 yeah. uh well dude charlene thank you so much for coming and hanging out with us and enjoying some sushi and we appreciate um just everything that you're doing and and like you know i, I love that you had a desire to be vocal and and i'm looking forward to seeing more of what you do and I, yes. I feel like this is just the beginning I feel like just a little bit of the personality that I'm getting from you is that you're mm -hmm. you're constantly dreaming and you're constantly inviting God into those spaces so thank That's you so for yeah. um, inviting us into your conversation today and um, folks thank you so much for tuning in for another episode of Good Service we'll see you on the next one we out of here no. peace Thank you guys so much for listening to this episode. If you like what we're doing, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, and hit that five-star rating, and make sure you write us a review. Follow us on all of our socials at Good Service Pod on Instagram and TikTok, and make sure you follow us on YouTube and subscribe at Good Service Podcast. Thank you, guys. Peace. Peace.